4.45 in the morning in California. Staff Sergeant Yin is already on the warpath. He runs one of the most successful boot camps in the United States. It is a reformatory camp, supervised by professional soldiers. The surgeon and his team will have to put 133 young people on the right track. This morning would be the, our, we call it shark attack, so it's when we come in um, very strong. And the purpose of this is to let them know that this is our world now. And in our world, we control everything here. The signal call for shark attack will be the born. Please inform your teams. In the dorm, the new recruits arrived last night. They're still asleep. It's their first wake-up call, and it's going to be brutal. Push-ups, jumps, squats, the shark attack has just begun. No way to flinch. Squat down, squat down, jump, down, jump, down, jump, down, jump. A proven technique for increasing stress levels to a maximum and assert authority from the start. Not good enough. Did I tell you to move, yes or no? No, sir. Jimmy Jazz, go! Sergeant Brown, Yin's right hand, is one of the few women in charge of the boys. No one has any interest in discussing their order. With 19 boot camps under his belt, Sergeant Yin quickly assesses his new recruits. Uh, they're very motivated, they're very encouraged. They're following all the instructions. It's going really well here today. Uh, I got a good group of young boys. Push ups, go! Nothing else, you understand that? Do you understand that? On the top floor, same shock for the girls. It represents a quarter of the workforce, and they are still separated from the boys. Stockton, with a population of 300,000, is an hour and a half from San Francisco. Here, we are far from the millionaires of Silicon Valley. The unemployment rate is twice as high as in the rest of the country. Away from the city, the boot camp served an important mission. To put their young people back on the right track. They are between 16 and 18 years old. Many of them grew up in poverty, sometimes even in drugs and violence. All of them are failing at school. Some have even done crime. Volunteers, they chose to live isolated from the world for five and a half months far from the temptations of their past. Their objective is to get back into school and have a better future. A free program funded by the military. An institution in the United States for 25 years. For Cheyenne, this boot camp is a last chance attempt. Car theft, hit and run, his criminal record is already loaded. Court case wouldn't be dismissed if I didn't graduate. And so that's the main reason I'm doing it. And for my high school diploma. A lot as they can. Marisol is 17 years old. Given up at birth, life did not do her any favors. I grew up in an abusive um, adopted home. I got kicked out. Um, I ended up in a shelter and I didn't know I was pregnant. But I um, had my daughter and right now I'm a little bit struggling. I'm still in long term foster care, but. Um, Trying to get my life together for her. 
Nicholas, 18 years old, is the dean of the class. Lonely, addicted to video games, he has no social life, no friends for 10 years. Out of desperation, his mother sent him to boot camp. Still would rather be home than stuck here. Why? Here I can't really do anything with my life. These young people are commanded by of 20 surgeons of the army. They are going to have an experience that will mark their lives. You are not wearing a uniform. You share a flag that we wear on our shoulders. They are led by Chief Yin, a former Iraq and Afghanistan now. veteran. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. And your actions show that you are failing. Some of you also, his right arm, Ronnie Surgeon Blood. Brown, who has an aggressive hold on his rebellious here. teenagers. For five and a half months, these young people are going to suffer in the hope of living a new life. But will they hold up? At boot camp, the shark attack okay, operation all continues. All I said squat down! Squat down all the way, Kennedy! You can do it! I said squat! Hurry it up! Join in! Nicholas is already out of strength. It's just Hurry up! Starting all to get the person out on in me. front of you! Marisol must take advantage of her last resources. And Shayan is taken it. back to Hurry order. Up. After an hour, the surgeon gives them an overview of the program. Your mission for this class is to accomplish a change in your life. But in order to make that happen, you must sweat. You must work for it. You must go through the challenge and the fire today. You'll be given instructions. You will comply to my instructions. If you do not comply, your cadges will come back out here and cape you. Do you understand? Yes, Are you ready for this? Yes, Are you ready for this? Yes, Sergeant! To break away with their old life, Recruits will have to follow the discipline and respect schedules. Back in the dorm, the girls have two minutes to put their things away. So when we do not make my time hat, I give you something to motivate you to say, you know what, I better make Sergeant Matthews time hat next time. Run the rest! Let me get to the push-up position. Get out! Push-up position. Hurry up! Yeah. Hurry up! Yeah! Up! Yeah! 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 Slightest mistake, and the penalty Freeze will it. come at you right away. Oh, For boys, yeah. it is Wake the same up. treatment. I'm gonna come by and adjust you guys. I'm gonna adjust your hand, okay? Yes. Yes. With Sergeant Yin, find that out, find that out, find that out. salvation find that out. is a matter of millimeters. Close your thumb up. I'm, uh, I'm teaching uh, my candidates here um, um, during the ceremony. Uh, right now we're doing peace of arms. Uh, we use peace of arms to salute um, flags, officers, show respect to board members. Can I fix your, can I fix your position? Can I fix your position? Yes, sir. Okay, look, come my hand right here, okay? Close your fingers up, all right? Okay, now put it right here. Now lower this down a little bit, okay? Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Among girls, you learn to respect order, right even get when you get out get of the out. shower. Get out! How about you get out! How about you get out! No, no, no! Reset! Get back! You better sound off! I can't hear you! Go! Zero one, zero two, three. For Marisol, 17 years old, it's been a tough day. What's your last name? My 
contains you like a little bit of anger because it's just like I'm not used to these people I don't even know you and you're yelling at me and yeah I have to do everything time and it's very hard like and our cadres yell a lot <laughs> so it's very difficult not to snap at them like because if I get snapped I'm gonna get kicked out so I'm trying my best just to keep my mouth shut <laughs> I don't want to get kicked out even though it's a hard place to be the only moment of respite is granted in the evening. There's no phone here, no computer. Their unique link with the outside world is the mail. It's the only time of the day that Marisol is allowed to look at the photo of her little Rena, born a year ago. That's yes, um, my daughter right there. It's very hard because um, I'm not used to not seeing my daughter. Um, I don't know how she's doing, but I'm hoping she's doing okay. Marisol will have to put up with this distance for five and a half months. For the duration of the boot camp, she gave her baby to her sister. A sacrifice she accepts to offer her daughter the life she herself couldn't have. My whole life I was just put down. My mom was very mean, very hard on us. Um, she didn't really want us, she just wanted the money that came with us. So she, they, we would get hit a lot, a lot. And we never said anything because of the fact that we knew that if we did, it would get worse. So I'm just trying to better myself because I don't want to mess up and then have my daughter taken away and be in my place. I have to do what I have to do, I guess. Because if I don't, I don't know where I'll end up. For the boys, it is 20 o'clock, and it's also about putting out the fires. Milk! Your heels are touching! Your feet are at a 45 degree angle! Your head is on your pillow! Your arms are to your side! Your hands are in fists! You are looking up at the ceiling above you or the bunk above you. You are not moving. You are not moving. However, nothing escapes Sergeant Brown's eye. Give me your book, candidate. Why do you have your book out? It's a Bible. I don't care, it's not authorized in acclimation phase. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant. You will get this back in the morning? Yes, Sergeant. What's your name? Romo. Romo Sergeant. Romo Sergeant. When you wake up in the morning, it is a new day. Whatever happened today is gone. Adjust! Absolutely zero tolerance in this phase when it comes to having anything in bed to read and that includes spiritual books so right now it's hard you know very hard on them which is not me as a person but so acclimation phase is difficult for me to be as a cadre but um, you can tell I don't have a voice but it's very necessary very necessary A few days later, the atmosphere is a bit more relaxed. The aim of this new test, learn team spirit. 1 meter 88, 140 kilos for Nicholas. Crossing this three meter wall is a real challenge in his daily life. 
This young man lives reclusive and never calls on anyone. Here, it is thanks to others that he manages to surpass himself. I wouldn't be able to do it by myself without my squad. It's still just another step to help this program. Nicholas is undergoing this boot camp. Unlike the others, he was not a volunteer. It was his mother who forced him to come so that he can get out of his bubble and socialize. That, that is scary. That one looks hella fun. Okay. I can barely feel my arms. Do you feel your legs at least? It hurts like hell. It hurt like hell, I'm sure. Sergeant Yin is keeping an eye on him because if Nicholas makes an effort today, he only has one idea in mind. It's to leave the boot camp. Okay. I'm trying to push toward where I can get back to my mom. I'm not sure if I want to go to graduation. Well, I'm sure I want your graduation. We're gonna continue to push for graduation. At least I will and my team will. Anything to say? No, sir. Of course not. You have anything to say. Right, carry on. Have fun. Let's go! Hurry up! Nicholas became the surgeon's main concern. It is not the first time he has expressed his desire to give up. Two, one, zero! Zero! Going all now. Back in the dorm, Surgeon Yin will try at all costs to convince him to stay. What's your canteen down? So why did you show up? You want to make her proud? I don't know if I could continue with the program. Uh, you are on the team of the program. That's not your choice. It's my choice. You're here now. You're my responsibility. My mom probably wouldn't be proud if I gave up. If she see you right now, I think she would be proud of you. I think she would. Because even though you are hurting, even though you're tired and exhausted, even though you doubt yourself, you're still trying. And you should be proud of yourself. How does that feel? Good, Sergeant. Good. Sergeant Yin thinks he found the words, but Nicholas is going to give him another hard time. He will not be the only one. Actions are right. The next day, other recruits Just will disobey orders. Loud. Right. Sergeant Brown's your reply was then immediate. Than your words. And your actions show that you are failing. Some of you want to continue to move. Run in place, go! You better keep your gear in your hands. For real! I said nothing! Get out! Hurry up! Hurry up. Hurry up. At boot camp, responsibility is collective. If someone makes a mistake, the whole group suffers the consequences. Cadre, all clear. You will not run my academy. Right now, there is a target on your chest because you are failing to meet my expectations. This will continue day in and day out until you are right. And when I say you, I mean everybody. Oh On your feet, five, four, three, two, one. So you're gonna start paying your debts. I will get what I want. And you will get what you need. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant! Jumpy Jazz, go. Let's go, one cup. The boot camp philosophy by a pipe moved towards redemption. For the military, anything is possible if you suffer. Stand up. The slightest mistake is unforgiving. Put your hands over your head. Push-ups! 
This kid is having an asthma attack. He is on the verge of asphyxiation. Sergeant Yin knows about his illness, but the teenager forgot his inhaler for the third time. Where's your inhaler at? Whose fault is that? How many times I tell you I've got your dog on inhaler? Go get your inhaler! Go! I don't want to hurt anyone here. Um, even though this, even though I want the kids to be right, I'm not going to do at the expense of their health and, um, and, and their life. Bear crawl! It's in these extreme conditions that boys and girls will go through the two-week integration course. Some will give up along the way. All the others will become cadets and start school. They will then make a fresh start. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hurry up, gentlemen. I shouldn't see anybody making bunks anymore. You've got plenty of time. Let's go. After two weeks, it's the big day at Stockton Boot Camp. No more gray tracksuits. Recruits have the right to wear uniforms. They are now cadets. Only two people out of 133 broke down and left the base after six days. Nicholas is dragging his feet, but he is still there. Among the girls, Marisol was also hooked. As a cadet, she earned a small privilege. Good. I have a daughter right there. <laughs> she has the right to keep the photo of Rena with her. So I passed my acclimation phase. Now I can carry her around with me and not get in trouble. <laughs> that feels good. On the way to the cadet ceremony, the girls are regaining a bit of freedom. Deprived of music for 15 days, they can finally have fun. Surgeons are not the last to set the mood. Hey, you guys on the radio, so be loud. It's their time right now, they have fun, so it's all good. You have to let them have that every now and then before we bring down into the back to the structure. But I like seeing this a lot. I'm killing your brains like a poisonous mushroom deadly. Sergeant Montiel takes the opportunity to let them discover his hidden talents. You better play plays where the kids don't play. I think it's really cool because we never see the like yeah ever. We never see their personality. Never. You, you show them a little softer side. They've earned it. They're not candidates anymore, they're now cadets. The cadet ceremony is an important step in rebuilding these young people who, until then, had missed everything in their lives. We need to show them that today, they are on the road to success. Nervous. To mark the event, it is on a second World War aircraft carrier that they will be honored. She's the boss of the boot camp, Major Hudson, who is going to congratulate them in person. Yes, ma'am. Oh my God, this is happening. For Marisol, it's consecration. With her companions in pain, they are received one by one on stage through all the commandments. Right now, take that bracelet. Put it on. Hurry up. As a symbol of their new cadet rank, a red bracelet with a motto, integrity. A great moment of pride for many, except for Nicholas, who maintains a rebellious spirit. It still just feels pretty neutral to me. For others, this ceremony is the promise of a new life. Let me explain to you what
what just happened. You are a cadet. You are not wearing a uniform. Challenge starts now. You have school now. We will continue to challenge you because we believe in you and because you are worth it 24-7. Do you understand? Yes, Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant! How are we feeling? Good! Back at the base, the cadets are not at the end of their emotions. Tonight, they have the right to a five-minute phone call with their family. It's the first time since they arrived two weeks ago. For Marisol, the soldiers have a surprise in store for the mom. With the complicity of his sister, they brought in his little Rena. With his new cadet status, Marisol will now have the right to see her daughter one and a half per week. She's like, thank you. I'm that girl. You miss mommy? You miss mommy? You can't, okay, go ahead. Um. Mommy got this for you. I got it because of you. I got it, baby. This bracelet means a lot because of this bracelet, I get to wear this uniform. And because of this uniform, I get to call myself a cadet. I want to be a role model. Like, I want to be somebody in life. Being a mom means the world to me. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you got pregnant at 16. Like, what the heck? Like, that's sad. Like, yes, it is. Like, I shouldn't have. You know, but I don't regret it because of her, I'm here right now. Because of her, I'm trying to better myself. If Marisol came to the boot camp, it's also to catch up at school. Without a high school diploma, it's hard to get a job and to take care of her little Rena. Will she be able to catch up? In Stockton, young people go to school for several weeks. The school is located within the boot camp itself. Shayan is a delinquent who has stolen cars several times and hit and run offenses under his belt. The judge promised her to drop the lawsuit if she finishes the boot camp. The court case wouldn't be dismissed if I didn't graduate. And so that's the main reason I'm doing it, and for my high school diploma. Do you have a nuts? A lot of stick. Cheyenne's future is at stake, and at the moment, she is poorly engaged. Relegated to the back of the group, she has to go on a series of pumps and mountain jack. What's going on, Shay? It's hard keeping. If she is sanctioned, it's because she broke a rule. She was caught in the showers one evening, kissing the girl on his right. Here, when you break the rules, it's back to square one. It's basically the first two weeks how we were like that, in the sweats, that's what it is. So it's basically that all over again. But they pick the amount of days that they want it for. Cheyenne is no longer allowed to wear the uniform. That is not all. Another sanction is weighted. The disciplinary council will decide it. But what's negative 15, what? What 0.5 plus 17, so you have to subtract 15 <laughs> from 17. In the meantime, she shows her efforts to get her high school diploma. Yes. 
Unlike others, she only has a few points left to validate, and she hopes to get them here. Um, I used to struggle with math, but this teacher like helped me get it. So now it's getting a lot easier. I used to not be able to do like a single problem by myself, but I already did it all day. These young people are several years behind in school. Before, I did not care. I wasn't at a regular school. I would go to a bunch of different schools, so I never felt like I fit in. And I'd end up like not going. Um, or sometimes I would do my work and not turn it in because I was too lazy. And I never had motivation to go every day. Um, so I think here we have a push to go every day. We have to go. So that helped me a lot. Too. So on page 73 to 74, Matcha. There are no distractions or telephones here. These young people, who were once unruly, are now on the loose. For good reason, surgeons are never far away, and they have an eye. We rotate in and out, just make sure they're disciplined, they're being respectful. If they fall asleep, if they fall asleep, we take them outside, do a couple workouts, make sure they stay awake. It's 3 o'clock p.m. sharp. It's the end of class. However, for Cheyenne, it's the start of trouble. Come on, let's go. It's time for the disciplinary council. The girl and her girlfriend will finally know what sanctions they are going to receive. Cheyenne is at high risk because until now, she has always denied the facts. His girlfriend, on the other hand, admitted that they kissed in the shower. Bowman, first one. Let's go. Everyone else, back up. So you, you're going to give them the same instructions on what to do? Hey, listen up. So you're about to meet the other side of me, because I'm not very, really happy right now, OK? You better figure out what you're going to tell me in that board, because it's going to really decide what I'm going to do. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? but I think this time it's bad. <sighs> Shane got the surgeon's message. She's going to confess quickly. Center yourself, I'm sorry, Matthews. Canada Bauman reporting to board. Speak up. Canada Bauman reporting to board is over. At ease. Why are you here today? And tell me about that. Tell me what happened. So what started all of this? Me, Asavis, and Adyar were all really close. Like, just best friends. And then Adyar and I started like, talking more like about like our life situations. And we found out that similar stuff has happened. And then it just kind of happened. And then the day in the shower, it was like, kind of like, it was like never planned or anything. That's the first honest thing I've heard from you about this situation. Because you've told many people different stories, even including myself. If you make a mistake, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just own up to it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Oh man, position of attention move. In regards to your integrity issues, I am giving you 15 days of pre-challenge. Do you understand that? Position of attention, salute. Cheyenne will have to endure 15 days of bullying and additional physical tests. After three months, cadets are allowed to return home for the first time for a family weekend. Before leaving, Sergeant Brown doesn't forget to give her group a final warning, the Titans. You have very proud people standing right here in front of you and over there waiting to take you home. 
So when you walk, I want you to be proud of where you have come from, proud of what you have accomplished, and proud of where you are going to go because you have a bright future ahead of you. But it's up to you to do the right thing. And it starts with sounding off. Yes, Sergeant! Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant! Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant! Because who are we? Titans! Who are we? Titans! Who are we? Titans! Who are we? Titans! Who are we? The little sisters find their big brother for four days of freedom, far from the military framework. Nicholas emptied his locker, and he intends to take the opportunity to look good. Pretty much just following the same plan we've had since the beginning to just get out of this place and not come back. Why not? I mean, there's already just so much I need to do, and being here is just wasting time. That is in progress, same thing for my life. Yeah. How do you think your mom is going to react? Do you think she's going to agree? What do you think? I'm really at the point where I don't really care how she reacts. It's my life, and I'm trying to progress it, instead of just being stuck in one place for the entirety of it. However, in front of his mother, Nicholas is not Hi. going to say exactly the same thing. You ready? You're not taking the rest of your stuff. No, you don't. You don't need, you're coming back, so you'll get your stuff when you come back. You're coming back. That's the last time we're going to talk about it. No, you don't. You're coming back Monday. That's, that's it. You have come way too far to turn back now. There's no turning back. We've had this conversation, you're finishing, you've changed so much already, and you're gonna keep going. The unpleasant surprises have only just begun for Nicholas. He was hoping to get his room and his video games back, but her mom, Sarah, booked her a weekend in the great outdoors, far from the screens in Santa Cruz on the California coast. Nicholas was seven when he started getting lost in video games. Maybe Sarah has a responsibility in her son's drift. Yeah, I drank for about eight years. I've been sober for almost four and a half. And so how was your relationship with Nick during that time? Distant, probably. Non-existent. I just, um, I would tell him to bring me beer. I stayed in the bedroom and watched TV and just alone. But he was just kind of, you know, playing video games. That's all he ever did. It's the thing I had to cope with with you doing that. Mm -hmm. My way of keeping myself separate from all that stuff. I just sunk even deeper into a world of games just to get away from it all. Basically, you play like role playing games, just like, sink into a different life just to get away from the current one, to find something good. And at times still even have to do that every now and then. To hear him talk about it and to, you know, express emotion and feelings and his own thoughts is huge, huge. And honestly, you know, three months ago, he, I don't think he would do that. Sarah doesn't know it yet, but in a few weeks, Nicholas will have another surprise in store for her. Shane was able to go home too. The disciplinary council and its sanction are behind her. She is preparing for an internship. Not just any of them. The young offender and car thief chose to spend half a day with the city police. I'm really excited to, for today because I, instead of being the person in trouble with them, I'm actually the one learning with them and going with them to see what they do. How are you? 
good. I'm Brandy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Your makeup looks really pretty. Thank you. <laughs> It was Cheyenne's grandmother who organized the arrival of Officer Aguilar. She knows that her granddaughter dreamed of joining the police years ago. This is something I've wanted forever. Like, I've always wanted to stay behind the scenes. Oh, no, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> oh, no, I better make it good. Be safe, okay? Love you. Love you, boo. It's off for four hours of patrol. The last time Cheyenne was in a police van, it was for another reason. I was um, ripped out of a car at gunpoint at 6 in the morning because um, the cops grabbed me really hard and put me in handcuffs. Informed of her offender resume, Officer Aguilar knows the agreement between Cheyenne and her judge to erase his criminal record at the end of the boot camp. You did this stuff when you were like, you know, younger, yeah. not younger, but I mean, when you're going through a hard time, Judge Stashin obviously saw something in you. Mm -hmm. Just having your back completely, shows like, that's, you a lot. that's a huge thing. And like, like, if I can change your mind, like about law enforcement, like about you having like any bad experiences with law enforcement or whatever, then I'm doing like what I'm supposed to be yeah. doing. Cheyenne will have the opportunity to find out how does Officer Aguilar proceed in the field. She just spotted a suspicious car at a standstill. What happened to your car? Sorry about that. I just bought it. It's from the auction. No plates? No nothing? Where's the paperwork? Hey, can you roll down this back window for me? How much weed do you got in the car? A little zip? All right. Officer Aguilar wants to check first that the driver is not armed. In the car, she spotted marijuana. In California, holding up to 28 grams per person is allowed. She grabs a big package. How much is it? Okay. Lucky, the driver does not exceed the authorized quantity. So he can go back, provided that he correct his license plates. All right, plates. we'll give you all your stuff. All right, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, have a good day. I can't search it just because of the license plate. It doesn't give me any reason to get inside the car. If he was on probation, I could search his car. Um, but I smelled weed, that's why I searched his car. And he was super cooperative. Mm -hmm. Do you think he was high? No, he wasn't high. He was fine. He didn't, didn't have blood, bloodshot eyes, nothing. He wasn't showing any signs of being high. So. She's <laughs> nice. I think she's nice. <laughs> she was like smiling and laughing with him, and usually they're like aggressive and mean, but she's really nice. I think that there should be a lot more female cops. I do too. <laughs> I think they're better than men. <laughs> Thank you. I could teach her how to be a cop. <laughs> Cheyenne's grandmother was right. Perhaps a vocation has been born. She'll do great things. I see it. She will with people like you behind her. Yeah, she's going to do great things. I can't wait to see you in a cadet uniform. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Cheyenne is now thinking of joining the police academy, but she has to go back to the boot camp first. After three and a half months, the atmosphere has changed a lot. During the daily sports session, music is even allowed. Everybody else, about face, march! It is now the cadets who take the group commands in turn, under the watchful eye of Sergeant Brown. 20, 19. Just make sure we kind of step back a little bit, and it's more cadet ran. So he gives out all the commands, he holds the time, because when they graduate, they're not going to have cadre here. More autonomy, more freedom, but even in the final stretch, everything is earned. Before they could play volleyball, the girls have to rehabilitate the land first. 
Marisol does not balk at the effort. Honestly, before I would not have done this, I would be like, what the heck, no. You can clean it. But like they show you teamwork and it was responsibility and know that things um, are not given to us. So this, this is a good thing for all of us to know that you have to work hard for what you want and we're, we're working hard right now. So it's a good thing. A lesson that Marisol understood and Johnson that will soon be useful to her when she will have to face life after the boot camp. After five and a half months of trouble, it's finally D-Day for Cheyenne, Marisol, Nicholas, and the other cadets from the Stockton Boot Camp. Hey, good morning, Tyson! Are you ready to graduate? <laughs> Among the boys, Nicholas does not hide his joy. He has lost 23 kilos since he arrived. We can say that it is a real liberation. Emoted, Sergeant Brown is also aware of the dangers awaiting his protégés when they are out of the camp. It's scary for me to think about the kids going back into a bad situation or them making a, a bad decision. That's the risk. All right, I'm not going to cry yet. <laughs> Focus. Oh my God. You ready? Where's your bag? This departure is a return to reality for Marisol. This boot camp was a refuge for her after growing up from homes to foster families. Um, I don't know. I'm, I have to go to school on Tuesday. Um, I'm trying to get to transitional housing so where they can help me get my own place. Um, so I'm trying to figure out for now. On the verge of erasing his criminal record, Cheyenne realizes how far we've come. But I remember the first day I wanted so much to leave and everything, and now it's like if I would have left, I never would have been able to accomplish everything that I've accomplished so far. And um, it was really worth the stay. Emergency exit face. Right side follow. It's the last order they have to execute. The girls will never come back to this dorm again. I'm nervous. We're gonna go back and see the real world. <laughs> Before starting a new life, surgeons pay a final tribute to cadets. It's in Stockton, in the Grand Theater in the city center, when is the boot camp graduation ceremony taking place. The families and loved ones are in the room. For the cadets, the tension is at its peak. Oh my God. Oh my God. Everyone is waiting for the top start. It will be delivered in a few seconds. And Nicholas is the conductor. I have to play a song for all the other cadets to when they walk in. And how do you feel? Pretty as nervous as I can get. It's with their heads held high that the cadets march to the cheers of their loved ones.
them a round of applause. Nicholas, the introvert, makes the whole room cry. Finally, let's hear it for Cadet Moser on the piano. In the eyes of the cadets, pride in having finally achieved something in their life. Please take your seats. <laughs> the time has come to hand over diplomas, the only one that most of them never got. 85% of young people have finished the boot camp, one of the best success rates in the country. With an average of 14, Marisol will soon get her high school diploma and dreams of becoming a nurse. Nicholas does not have a grudge against Surgeon Yin, who, however, forced him to push his limits. Cheyenne got all the points she was missing, and she got her high school diploma. She should continue her studies at the university. In the United States, across the country, nearly 80% of the youth who graduate from these programs obtain their diploma and they get a job. Three and a half months after the boot camp, Nicholas went back into video games. He is living again in his room, away from the real world. Cheyenne has not returned to school. She reconnected with her past as a delinquent. She is currently wanted by the police. Marisol found her daughter, but no housing. She lives from hotel to hotel. She's hanging on. She is about to graduate from high school and to enroll in a nursing school.